Working life back at the time of Peterloo was, was difficult, I would say, for the majority of people. The working conditions were tough, they were bleak, and wages were very low. I think that's one of the reasons why people were so interested in getting the vote, not as a principle in itself, but as a means out of poverty. It was a way to escape their circumstances. Members of parliament had to be big landowners. They were the only ones who were allowed to vote and all the only the ones who were allowed to stand. If I tell you that there were a million people in Lancashire and about 12 MPs in Cornwall, which had a fraction of the population, there were 42 MPs. Manchester at the time didn't have a Member of Parliament, so there was nobody representing the people of this city. And Britain was exhausted after a generation of wars. There was just no reform, absolutely nothing, just repression, and an awful lot of demobilised soldiers around who were very angry and very unemployed. The agricultural interest was protected by the Corn Laws. The Corn Laws had a tremendous and terrible effect on people's lives, especially working people. They couldn't afford to feed themselves. Suddenly people began to question, why are we putting up with this? Why does Manchester have no Member of Parliament for the whole of this rapidly growing city? And so people began to organise in the early reform movement, really, to start questioning the kind of uh, representation that, that they had and calling for a different system. So the 16th of August, St Peter's Field was planned a peaceful demonstration. If you look at the pictures, you can almost see it as a bit of a festival, you know, all these big, big flags everywhere. It was a day where people put on the Sunday best, families came down with children and babies. It was a protest, but it was a peaceful protest. So the first march came in from Ashton under Lyne. There was another one from Stockport. There were marches who'd come down from Bury and from Haywood and from Rochdale. Samuel Bamford was in charge of organising the march from Middleton. He was the head steward of that, and he wore a laurel in his hat. I think it was one in a hundred men wore a laurel, and they were like the stewards of the day. There were roughly about 60,000 people, which is huge when you think about the population. This was one of the biggest demonstrations in British history. What they were doing, they believed they were doing it for the good of the country, for the good of everybody, not just themselves. Everybody had come to see Henry Hunt. He was a tremendous sort of figurehead of the radical movement. Mary Fields was the president of the Manchester Female Reform Society, and on the day she was on the procession with Henry Hunt, and she was really targeted as the most well-known woman leader on the day. For the authorities to hear this tremendous roar of the crowd, they had never seen or heard anything like this before. I think it was a threat to their power, it was a threat to the standard order of things, and, and, and they viewed it as a rabble, the rabble taking, taking over. They knew things would change forever if, if these people were allowed to get their way. The magistrates decide they want to arrest Henry Hunt. They had the warrants already drawn up, and then, I mean, it looks like they panicked. They sent in the yeomanry, and a lot of them had been drinking all afternoon. So the yeoman who went in, sort of gung-ho, inebriated, angry and aggressive, with sabres on horseback. And you can imagine the kind of mayhem that's going to break out once you've done that. Mary Fields was slashed across her body. Observers talk about the yeoman who were attempting to murder her, really. But she managed to survive. There was a disproportionate number of women that were killed, and the question is why? Women were fair game, as they often are whenever there's a political statement to be made. It's by attacking the women that you attack the household. The commander of the Hussars, Lestrange, went up to the magistrate in charge, Mr Holton, and said, what shall I do? And Holton said, can't you see they're attacking the yeomanry, which wasn't true, disperse the crowd. They could have done all sorts of things to disperse the crowd, but they decided to charge. And hundreds of people in the crowd were trampled, many of them had been sabred. There was a riot at St Peter's Fields, but it wasn't the crowd that rioted, it was the authorities. We view demonstrations and protests today that they're going to be peaceful, that we should facilitate people's lawful right to assemble and protest, and that's our starting point. But at that time, law and order was used as a tool to silence people and stop the event, and some personal grudges were settled. 
and that skewed some of the thinking of those in command. The aftermath, it was like Waterloo. It looked like a battle scene. It looked like the remnants, you know, of a war. And, and it was on Peter's Field. So it became, they put the two together, Waterloo, on Peter's Field, Peterloo. On Peter's Field in Manchester in year 1819, when cotton folk in Lancashire in protest did combine. So immediately following the protests, Hunt and Bamford are taken away, and Hunt spends two years in prison. Samuel Bamford spends one year. Mary Fowles has been seriously injured, but she manages to escape and she goes into hiding. And really the movement is, is repressed, and the movement goes underground. Who were to conscience true? A whole new set of laws were brought in, the six acts, which were aimed to control the press, control large crowds gathering, and to make sure you know, that this didn't happen ever again. Sound of marching feet. So one way or another, all the things that the reformers managed to do in this mass platform campaign, as it was called in 1819, uh, were declared illegal at the end of the year. The magistrates look down with gloom. Ordinary people, to keep the memory of Peterloo alive, they have to think of really imaginative ways of kind of um, preserving or commemorating the massacre. So at the museum, we hold handkerchiefs that were made en masse, really, to tell the story and to show the outrage of what had happened. Their blood for common good on field of Peterloo. The radical press got the story out there. They got the story out nationwide and then later on worldwide. So John Edward Taylor, a 28-year-old journalist who was in the crowd at Peterloo, was very radicalised by what he saw. And he decided that he wanted to set up a newspaper dedicated to the cause of political reform. And he decided to call it the Manchester Guardian. For people at the time, Peterloo was a bitter failure. They had really high hopes that this would change things. It took a long time before change actually happened, but it was a trigger. It's really only after the 1832 Reform Act, with the emergence of the Chartist movement, that the ideas of Peterloo are taken up again, really in, out of the ashes of Peterloo. And give their blood for common good on field of Peterloo. There are, of course, some people that say there's no point campaigning, there's no point protesting, nothing ever changes. But I think one of the things that Peter Lou shows us is there's always a point. The only way change has ever happened is because of protesting and campaigning. I spend a lot of my time going to countries where protest isn't really possible, where people can't really go onto the streets for fear of being arrested. You see the corrosive effect that has on their own sense of freedom. So the right to protest, the right to go out there and say what you believe and what you're angry about and what you want to change is absolutely fundamental to democratic free societies. Collective action is really significant and very effective. When you're one voice, you can be drowned out by other people at times, but when you speak as a voice of millions, then you really can change. Peterloo is the memory of the sacrifice of so many individuals and that memory is important. We need to remember, we need to honour, we need to think about the links across time in the campaigns and the challenges to the establishment that have continued and will continue. So I'm very inspired by what those people did that day. They engaged with political life. They demanded a fairer society. They demanded a fairer Britain and they came out in their Sunday best and fought for that. It was really, for me, the birth of democracy. This was one of the events that was the catalyst. Protest is an extremely important part of a healthy democracy. That is what democracy is about. Our right to be able to say, I am sorry, no, I don't agree. I think if there was to be a protest, similar to what had happened with Peterloo, but nowadays I would be there. I would have my son there, I would have my daughter there with me and we would be protesting. Peterloo is our working class ancestors fighting for 
the rights that we have now. That's, that's what it means to, to me. It means them dying for, for the rights that we have now. Thank you.